Welcome everyone um, to Nurturing Open Education uh, through Stakeholder Surveys. Um, this, is a, this, is, this is a webinar with um, CCCOER um, and my executive president of my council. So Una Daly here, uh, director of the Community College Consortium for OER. And I'm here with uh, Dr. Judith Sebesta, who I'll let introduce herself. Thank you so much, Una. I'm so glad to be here and have the opportunity to present. I serve as the Executive Director of the Digital Higher Education Consortium of Texas, based here in Austin, Austin Texas. And I also have the privilege of serving as the CCC OER uh, Executive Council President. Thanks, Una. Wonderful. Thank you, Judith. And so uh, today we're here to talk to you about um, how using uh, surveys as one tool to increase communication uh, bet between our members and uh, between us and our members um, and how that supports and nurtures um, open education programs. And so that's pillar number four of the UNESCO um, OER recommendations. And we've decided to split this into two case studies for you. So we have a case study based on CCC OER and its annual survey. Uh, that we've been doing since 2013, actually, with our members. And then um, uh, Judith will share the biennial surveys that um, Digitex uh, does uh, for the statewide Texas uh, group. So I'm excited to tell you about both of those um, survey efforts. So just to really quickly about the Community College Consortium for OER, we um, have members across the United States and Canada, uh, founded over a decade ago, and um, our, our mission is expanding awareness and adoption of high quality OER. We work with faculty and uh, librarians, administrators on this work. Um, it's about fostering OER leadership, but at the heart of it is improving student equity and success. And those things haven't changed over the last decade. Those are still really important, although many under, under, underpinnings, technology things have changed in the last 10 years. Just a really quick um, look at our membership, um, about 20% represent statewide or system um, memberships, which of course, uh, Judith as the executive director of Digitex is one of those statewide membership groups. Um, we also have 20% that are multi-college districts and about 60% of our members are individual colleges that are trying to do this work around open education. And I call out to California, Texas, and Wisconsin, which are the states within um, our consortium that have the most members. So why conduct an annual survey? Well, our members, when they join, um, we get to know them, but over time they change. And we sometimes we don't have an opportunity to have those one-on-one -on -one conversations. So we really hear about um, what's going on um, at their um, institution and um, what their needs are. Um, and so at least annually, we wanna check in and we, we like to do that more often as well. We wanna understand what the value of the membership within CCC OER is, and we wanna encourage collaboration um, between our members because we know that together we are a very powerful um, group. And finally, we wanna understand their member priorities. So we always ask about what's coming up in the next year for you, and then what do you see two to three years out? Uh, and this helps us with planning uh, um, and promoting collaborations um, for our um, upcoming year of activities. But we don't wait <laughs> till the end of the year uh, to ask these questions. Um, we have quarterly meetings, um, other opportunities, of course, to um, interact with folks. But just last March, uh, we we did a poll during our, our quarterly meeting in March. And we said, you know, there's so many wonderful things we could do this summer. What would you like to hear about? And we got some great feedback um, from our members at that point. And that led to the creation of a virtual book club focused on equity, diversity, and inclusion this summer, and also the open pedagogy tutorial series. So wonderful feedback through that as well. So this last year, we um, shipped out our survey um, early in May. And we usually give our members about three weeks um, to respond back. And uh, we encourage them uh, <laughs> multiple times over that time period to please fill that out for us. Um, and so we were very happy to um, get um, almost 40%, a little under 40% um, of our membership responding uh, this year. And what I wanted to tell you about um, 
on this particular slide is that um, the largest uh, role of the respondent to this uh, survey was administrators. So those are often um, the folks who are running programs, um, uh, making some decisions around policies at their institutions or organizations. So they're a very important voice and we were glad to see that we also did have um, over 40%, almost 50% faculty or librarians who responded. So those are definitely our boots on the ground and very important voices as well. And um, OER, dedicated OER staff continues to be a minority um, at our institutions and organizations. Um, most institutions have not established an OER department, but a few have. Um, and who's in charge of open education on campus? Another interesting one. Once again, libraries came out as um, the top uh, department that's in charge, but e-learning and teaching and learning centers also are a very critical um, leader in this area for the institution. And once again, dedicated OE open education staff is in a minority at most of our institutions. So we were really pleased to see that 41% of our respondents it reported an increased interest in open education for 2021. And part of that was our survey back in 2020 um, indicated that um, the pandemic had really shifted priorities and that OER was taking a little bit of a back burner um, during that time. So we were very happy to see that it had come back really strongly. And 61% reported that student savings was the most successful aspect of their open education program over the last year. And you can see there were other various pieces that were important as well, such as pedagogy, improved pedagogy, equity, et cetera. Um, so what were their top professional development needs? Um, measuring the impact of open education, looking at open pedagogy as a tool for student empowerment. And of course, I just mentioned that over the summer, we had an open pedagogy tutorial series open education as an anti-racism tool, um, which is another important project, uh, which we won't have time to talk about today, but is a really uh, something that our members are thinking about and very concerned. And once again, OER course design, open education leadership continue to be uh, top um, needs. Um, challenges, um, funding, funding um, is often at the very top of that. Um, and so I wanted to tell you about some of the funding sources. This was the first time this year that we actually asked about funding sources. So um, federal and state grants were a little over 60% of what was funding um, the work at um, our, our member institutions and organizations. Uh, colleges were also funding that work through innovation grants, um, uh, faculty stipend grants as well at 73%. So really wonderful to see that. But in terms of having an ongoing open education budget, that still is in the minority for most of our organizations, looking at about 15%. And private donors came in um, even a little bit less at 6%. So what were your priorities for the next one to three years? Um, you know, honestly, this this hasn't changed much in the last couple of years as we compare between 2020 and 21, raising OER awareness on campus. And this is not just um, for faculty, it's also administrators. And over the last few years, really getting students involved. So uh, figuring out how students can also be advocates for open education as beneficiaries of much of this work, um, they can be quite articulate. Um, and also um, faculty OER adoptions, obviously that's a huge one. Improving student success is, is often the why around um, the open education work, but um, increasing equitable education opportunities, that's really moving ahead in terms of who, which students, I mean, we do wanna help all students, but we wanna work particularly with those students who can benefit most from open education. And um, what, what has changed um, between 2020 and 21, just kind of summing that up. Um, in 2020, our members said that their uh, most successful aspect was creating OER awareness on campus. In 2021, it's student savings. So um, OER awareness is a little higher this year, which we're, we're so happy to hear, and that student savings is something that um, they can really claim as a, as a success measure. Um, yeah, back in 2020, um, lack of time was identified. Um, and of course, you know, we were right in the midst of kind of that really 
the worst part of that early part of the pandemic. Um, and now um, institutions, organizations are reporting that getting faculty buy-in is, is one of their top challenges. So um, excited to help them work on, with that, uh, with those challenges that they have. So collaboration opportunities, I mentioned a little earlier, collaboration is what our consortium is all about. How can we support our members in collaborating um, together um, and how, what activities can we create to encourage that? So what was reported back to us is that um, um, networking is the really key piece. And so faculty and librarian came up very much at the top with leadership networks right underneath that and equity focused networks. And so we do have a program this year where we're um, doing some an intensive program called the Regional Leaders of Open Education, and it is very focused on faculty and librarians and also, I would say, mid-level administrators. It's a leadership network, um, and it has a very heavy equity focus. So we, we encourage our members to, to join that group, um, but we will also have activities that will focus on, on bringing um, all of these constituents together. And the Student Advocacy Network is new this year. It was a little less than half of our um, our respondents, but we're really excited to see that as well. Um, something for us to work on this year. Um, and so the, we wanted to ask about the benefits of global open education community collaboration, because of course CCCR, CEOER is part of Open Education Global, which is a global organization representing members in 40 countries around the world. So um, one thing that our members said is that they felt that um, they could contribute and also have access to more openly licensed materials through this wonderful community. Uh, there's, a, there's a strong interest in mentoring, uh, both regionally and then across uh, country boundaries. So um, something that we're working on this year, uh, we hope by, by mid-level mid of this year, we'll have more um, plans around what that mentoring work might look like. And um, our, our folks are very interested in global and multicultural perspectives. And we recently just had a webinar actually last week where we were fortunate to have um, some open edu education uh, folks from both the Caribbean and from Nigeria. Um, so, um, and people were very pleased with that and we hope to do more. So we wanna take action on these surveys. We don't wanna simply hear what our members need. Um, and so what we were very clearly told is they want professional development on OER impact studies, course design, how to get funded, what are the funding opportunities and how to pursue those, um, open pedagogy and students um, and collab collaboration opportunities, both regionally and, and globally. And so we have already started to put plans in place for our professional development this year around those topics. And lessons learned. <laughs> <laughs> There's always some great lessons learned. Um, next year, we're going to ask a little bit more information about uh, the role on campus and what their priorities are and see if that creates a slightly different um, skew on what the important, um, the important challenges and uh, professional development needs are. Um, we're going to um, ask some more open-ended questions this upcoming year so we can better understand some of the priorities. Um, some of the priorities of, uh, um, of our members um, and dig a little bit deeper. And finally, we're gonna clarify the goals of the annual survey in order to make the results more actionable. So this is something that we've been thinking about for a while and, and next year is the time to do it. And finally, we have chosen a new survey tool um, that we think will really support us in the um, analysis of um, the data. And so I now, I uh, want to turn this over to my colleague, um, Dr. Judith Sebesta. So I'm going to stop sharing and let her um, come in. And Thank you so much, Una. I think there are some interesting and not entirely surprising intersections between the CCC OER survey and our own. Let me pull up my slides. So as I mentioned, I serve as executive director of the Digital Higher Education Consortium of Texas, also known as Digitex. We serve all 50 Texas public community college districts. We were founded as the virtual college back in 1998, and we facilitate intercollegiate course sharing among other initiatives, including leading the Texas Quality Matters Consortium, 
providing free membership in WCET state authorization network. We conduct research and we host free webinars on digital higher education. And then most germane to my presentation today, we support a variety of open education initiatives across Texas and beyond. These include our bien biennial statewide survey, which I'm going to focus on more today, a statewide annual conference, and a variety of professional development activities, including our Texas Learn OER course. And of course, not insignificant is that we provide a 40% discount to Texas community colleges on the CCC OER membership. For my presentation today, let me focus some on this biennial statewide survey in which we have engaged and partnered with several organizations on. So I'd like to do a kind of who, what, why, when, where sort of, um, sort of thing with this. So why are we doing the statewide survey? Well, to collect data to make informed decisions on resource allocation and initiatives to better understand, uh, uh, to, get, to gain a better, broader understanding of open education across the state, and to engage in partnerships and collaborations in order to amplify our reach and impact as an organization. Our primary goal, though, is to help build an open ecosystem in Texas and thus across the country and the world. So who and when? We partner with the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board, which is our state higher education agency, and with the Institute for the Study of Knowledge Management and Education. This has been a very productive partnership for us and has enabled us to have, to bring multiple perspectives and various expertise to the survey that we conduct. As I have mentioned and Una did as well, this is a biennial survey. We first conducted it in 2019. And this year we have conducted the second and we're just about to wrap up the final report for that second survey. The purpose of the survey is to examine the landscape of OER programs, policies and practices at higher education institutions across Texas. We administer the survey to all 158 two and four year public and private nonprofit institutions across the state. New for 2021 though, is that we administered also the survey to 11 independent health and medical centers, our health related institutions across Texas. We send the survey directly via email to campus CAOs, chief academic officers and chief instructional officers. And the timeline both years has been roughly 10 months from the initial partner meeting to the final report that we release and we will soon be releasing for 2021. So we had 111 respondents with two year colleges interestingly being the highest percentage of those respondents. Findings included some things like the growth of uh, formal OER programs and policies has been uh, uh, certainly something that has been a highlight of the 2021 survey data. We've seen an increase in fully OER based courses, especially again at two year institutions. 59% of the institutions report using OER to meet diversity, equity and inclusion guidelines. And interestingly, we've seen a correlation between cross office engagement on a campus and OER leadership in the state. So when there has been cross collaboration among different divisions, offices and units across the campus, we see that those often are our OER leaders in the state. Back in 2019, awareness building and professional learning were key priorities. They remain that way. And similar to what Una talked about with the CCC OER member survey, faculty buy-in um, is very crucial and that even increased for the 2021 survey. So what are some implications of the survey that we've conducted? Well, we've seen the importance of partnerships, funding availability, collecting impact data, and engaging faculty and students. Probably not surprising for these. And what these findings have led to for implications are recommendations for such strategies and initiatives as the creation of a state OER playbook to build capacity and drive systems change around, Texas, around OER increased support for professional development and creation of OER for career and technical education. There seems to be a need for that across the state. And also there was a recommendation to create a series of case studies on OER best practices in Texas. And we jumped on that right away. And my organization actually just recently released the first of these, creating and adopting open educational resources across the state. Finally, 
Some tips and takeaways for you if you're considering implementing an OER survey, be it at your organization, your institution, within your system, or even across states. Partner, network, collaborate, and this will very much strengthen the data that you can collect through this survey. And also capitalize on the, the unique strengths of each partner. The coordinating board and ISKME both have just amazing research chops and data analysis chops. To be perfectly honest, Digitech was able, Digitex was able to contribute financial resources to this partnership so that we could commission uh, the research from ISKME, the, uh, the organization ISKME. So that was kind of one of our strengths as Digitex, but we also have research uh, expertise as well. Work to create a strategy for a high response rate. Again, again, this is where the expertise of the coordinating board came in because they can send an email to the institutions and as a state higher ed agency, frankly, the institutions listen and they respond. Get the survey into the hands of the right people. That will differ across contexts. For us, we knew that it was getting it into the hands of the CAOs and the CIOs so that then they could collaborate with OER stakeholders across campus to get the most accurate data. Assure that respondents, assure the respondents that disaggregated data will not be released in order to ensure the integrity of the data. Plan for multi-year surveys if you can for greater impact and understanding as CCC OER has done and as we are doing. And finally, celebrate completion of the survey and the dissemination of your findings. Una, I'll turn it back over to you. Well, thank you so much, Judith. Um, <laughs> I learned quite a bit listening to your uh, wonderful uh, sharing about um, the Texas OER um, survey. Um, and I think now we want to continue this conversation in OEG Connect. So we'll be posting some resources there and we hope to hear feedback from you. So thank you so much for um, joining us uh, for this pre-recorded session. Thank you, everyone.